Hello friends, in the last video, we ran through the basics of Affinity Photo masking. We looked at what masks are, how it works, and the different ways to create them. In this video, we're going to be reinforcing the concepts learned in that previous video with four more examples so you can get an even better picture on how to use this powerful feature. So let's get right into it with our first example. In this first example, our objective will be to replace the dull view from the rock's hole with this more dramatic sunset in a composite image. By the way, if you want to try this yourself, feel free to pause the video and come back later for the solution. All the links to the images will be in the description. Now let's get on with the solution. First, let's add the images into Affinity Photo. I'll start off opening the sunset image first. I'll click File, Open. I'll select the image. Next, I'll drag in the second image. Alternatively, you can also just copy and paste the second image. There, both images are now opened in Affinity Photo as layers. I'll use the Move tool to align the images. Next, let's mask out the view. With the Snap to Edges property enabled, I'll use a selection brush to select the hole. I'll use the Polygonal Selection tool to further refine the selection. By the way, if you want to learn about selections, I made a video on that topic. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. There, the selection is done. Let's create the mask. With the top layer selected, I'll click the Mask Layer button. There, the mask has been created as a sub-layer of the top layer. Unfortunately though, the mask is incorrect, which we can infer from the erratic result. Let's view the mask to better see the problem. I'll control click the mask thumbnail. As you can see, the issue is the hole is appearing white in the mask rather than black. What we want is the inverse, the hole appearing black with the rest appearing in white. To fix this, let's invert the mask. I'll click layer, invert. Alternatively, you can also use control I to invert the mask. There you go, the mask has been inverted. And as you can see, it now gives the correct result with a beautiful sunset replacing the original dull scene. So that was the first example. Let's move on to the next one. For this second example, our objective will be to combine the images of the moon and earth into a composite which looks like this. Once again, pause the video to give it a try and come back later for the solution. To start off, I've already added both images as layers. To create the smooth transition from Earth to Moon, what kind of mask should we use for this task? If you answered gradient, that would be correct. Let's add the gradient mask. With the top layer selected, I'll click the Mask Layer button. There, the mask has been created. Let's add the gradient. To make this step clearer, I'll view the mask by alt-clicking on the mask thumbnail. Next, I'll click on the gradient tool. I'll set the type to linear. I'll make sure the gradient transitions from white to black. I'll drag in the gradient. There you go, a pretty decent result. Unfortunately though, the gradient transition is a bit too gradual. No problem, I'll just redo the gradient with a more abrupt transition. There, a better looking result. Next, I'll use the Move tool to align the bottom image with the top. And there you go, the final result. So did you get it? Write it down in the comments if you did. Now let's move on to the third example. For this example, our objective will be to create a brochure with a fancy effect wherein the text is hidden behind the subject while the lady's leg is protruding through the letter O. 
this is a more complex problem. And if you can do this on your own, that would be a good indicator that your masking knowledge is strong. So do give it a try. Now let's begin. As for making a brochure, I'll start off by creating a document with a specific size. I'll choose a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Next, I'll open the image. I'll use the Move tool to align the image with our document. Next, I'll add in the required text using the Artistic Text tool. There, all the text is in place. As you can see from the Layers panel, we now have five layers added. A pixel layer at the bottom, and on top of it, four text layers. Next, let's move on to the interesting part. How to achieve the effect of moving the text to the back of the subject while protruding the subject's leg through the letter O. As you would probably guess, the solution would have something to do with masks. But which layer out of the five should be masked? If you said the yoga classes text layer at the top should be masked, then that would be correct. I'll add a mask to the yoga classes text layer. Before I brush on the mask, I'll first make a partial selection of the lady to ensure that any brushing will be confined to only those areas where the lady overlaps with the text and nowhere else. To make the selection task easier, let's hide the text layer. With the pixel layer selected, I'll use a selection brush to make the selection. Okay, the selection is done. I'll unhide the text. I'll paint black on the mask where the letters overlap with the girls. As you can see, it has the effect of moving the text behind her. I'll do the same for the letter O to give the effect of the leg protruding through it. And there you go, our final brochure with all the fancy effects achieved with the power of masks. Next, let's move on to the fourth and final example. For this example, our objective will be to make a precise adjustment to brighten the underexposed tree, limiting the adjustment to just the tree. To start off, I'll begin by adding a brightness adjustment. Next, let's work to mask the tree. On the surface, it doesn't look like an easy task given the complex edges in the branches and leaves. So what type of mask would be best for this task? If you watched the previous video, you probably would have guessed correctly that the luminosity mask would be used, and that would be correct, as we can take advantage of the tree's darker tones to create a precise mask. I'll add a luminosity mask. From within the dialog, I'll manipulate the curve in a way to ensure the tree is white in the mask while black everywhere else. There, that's as much as we can do with the curve. As you can see, it is not perfect. A lot of the background is still in white. Thankfully though, Affinity supports the use of a brush to refine the mask further. I'll paint black to remove the incorrectly masked areas. There, a more precise mask. As you can see, the adjustment is now limited to just the tree. So there you have it, four more masking examples. I hope this helped to reinforce the concepts learned in the previous video. Let me know if you have further questions on Affinity Photo Masking, and perhaps we can make videos on these topics as well. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. 
to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.